Hello and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to go over statistical reports that you can share and print. Okay, so let's go into our menu. And down under statistics, the report is going to be the market summary report. And this will give you stats for a particular area. It does take a few minutes to load and here we go. So when you first come into this report, if you haven't used it before, it's not gonna say this Mission Hills because this is the last report I ran. It's going to say all residential. And that means these are gonna be stats within the whole MLS. So we have the number of listings, we have listing prices, the absorption rate, and it covers two years. So we have 2019 and 2020. So this is a really good report to look at stats within a location. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the days in the MLS and you can see price to volume. And then here's the good part where you come down here and we can see we have our median list price. Right now I'm looking at Mission Hills. So we have a median list price. We have our median sales price. That's for 2020, for April. And then you can compare it to April of 2019. We have our median days on the market, our average days on the market. I like to use the median numbers and look at them. They seem to be a little bit more true because you could have some properties that skew this average days on market. And you might, we might come across that as we're looking at different areas. So to change an area for these stats, you come up to the customize button here and we're gonna go to new location. If you click in this box here, so you can see it says city or postal code, et cetera. So click in this new location button. And just so you know, you can only add one area to this market summary report. So I can choose, these were the last searches I ran. So you can put in a subdivision. So let's try typing in Let's go to Palm Valley Country Club and double click it. So now we can see Palm Valley Country Club is here. Another thing I want you to notice is the report date. So if you click on the year, you can go way back in this report. So if you're working with a seller and they say, well, gosh, five years ago when I bought this house, the market was way different. You can go back into the year, like let's say 2015, and you can pull up stats for that year and take a look at what the conditions were back in 2015. Down here in this box, you can select the property type. So there's all these different property types. Today we're going to use residential. That's the most common. And now let's go ahead and search. And this is for 2015. So this is Palm Valley Country Club. Let's have a look. Okay, so we are looking at stats from 2015 here. Let's go down to our report. So it shows us 2014 prices. So the median price in 2014 was 349. And then we can see in 2015, it went up to 357. We have our median sales price, which seems that it went down from 2014. And then we have our median days on the market, our average days on the market. So now when we come back up to this customize button here, notice it says new location, 
previous location and favorites location. Let's go into our previous locations. And what this does is it takes you into all the locations that you've run so far. So we can select here for a previous location. And from here, you can select the year. And you can run a previous location right from this button on previous locations. They'll all be located here. If you want to make a favorites list, all you need to do is click on this little star. And that's going to make it a favorite. So it has disappeared. Notice there's no Palm Valley here anymore. And I can come down into my favorite locations. And that's where I find my Palm Valley report. So I'm going to change that to 2020. And let's see what's going on in 2020. So when we come down here, we can see our median list price is 354. Last year it was 398. And our median sales price is now 350 as compared to 390. It doesn't seem like it's changed that much. But here you can see the percentage of change from 2019 to 2020. So we had this, the median sales price went down and our absorption rate went down. Okay, so let's go in and what if you wanna run these statistics on more than one subdivision at a time. So notice if I click here, I can also select, select map overlays. So if you wanna run an area that you have, say it includes two or three subdivisions. So what you would need to do is outline these subdivisions in one polygon and save it. And that way, let me show you, um, here I have Mission Hills All. So if you go, if I select Mission Hills All, what I've done is I've created a polygon and saved it with all the Mission Hills subdivisions. And let me go ahead and show you that saved search. So I'm gonna go into my saved searches. And, oh, that's right, it's in my map overlays. So I'm going to go into quick search. And if I click in here, it shows me the map overlays that I've saved. So here's my Mission Hills All. I'm gonna click on this. And let's zoom in here. I'm gonna go into my subdivision overlay so you can see here on the map. So what I've done is I've zoomed into this area. I've taken my polygon tool and I've gone around all the different Mission Hills subdivisions. So I double click. So now I have Mission Hills Oakmont Estates, Mission Hills Country Club, Mission Hills Stone Ridge, Mission Hills Lakefront, Mission Hills Westgate. So I have about four or five subdivisions included in here. And when I go and I save that, that's how I can use it within that market summary report. So if you want to add more than one location for your market summary stats, that's how you would do it. Next, I'm going to go into my market reports. That's located under statistics under my market. 
Now with the My Market reports, you can use you can use saved searches for these reports. And you can compare up to three years. So these are the different reports in my market. You can have an inventory, sold dates on market versus units, sold days in market versus the sold price, volume and average price. And this hot sheet price change trends is really good because it's gonna show you within that area how the prices are, are trending. So this has taken a minute to load. Okay, let me try this again. I'm going to type my market up in the quick launch bar. Let's see. My market reports, here we go. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and save a search. When you're saving a search for this report, I'm gonna show you uh, how you need to do this. So let's go ahead and put in a subdivision. I'm gonna use Palm Valley again for some reason today. So you click on Palm Valley. And now we can see Palm Valley. And what you need to do for these market reports is you need to deselect the statuses because these different reports, they're gonna run different statuses. So in order for you to get true results, deselect your status. Okay, so I'm going to go over into save. And then we're gonna save this search. But we're gonna name it Palm Valley Stats. And I'm gonna save it as Palm Valley Stats. So any report that you're going to use for stats, use name it with stats. So that way when you pull the report and you grab your saved search, you know this is for a stat report. So I have my Palm Valley Stats. I'm going to use this saved search for the report. Okay, so this is what the saved search is. Okay, so we go back into our my, more, my Market report. And now we're going to select our saved search. And that should be Palm Valley Stats. So I'm going to select this. Okay, so let's look up here. So we have, it's a market report for 2018 through 2020. We're using all our MLSs and it tells you it's inside the subdivision of Palm Valley Country Club. So here's your average sold price year over year. Here's 2020. Here's 2019 and 2018. And this is your days in the MLS. This is all for Palm Valley. 
Okay, so let's go down and you can see month over month, the average sold price and your sold days on market. Okay. So let's look at another report. We're looking at days on market versus sold price right now. Let's look at our inventory. So we're looking at active sold new listings inventory. Here's our active listings right now for 2020. Here we go in 2019. We can see there was a dip here. We have our sold listings down here. And then we have our new listings. Then if you go down here, you have your month over month. We have active new listings. We have new listings, sold listings, and our month's inventory. And that goes covers three years. Okay, let's look at another report. Sold days on market versus units. We have our active, new, oh, we just did that one, sorry. Okay, that was units, sold price. Let's go into our average price and volume. So we can see we have our sold volume, our average, new average list price, our active average list price. And that goes year over year from, covers three years. You can also export this. So if you have, if you're pretty tech savvy and good with reports, you can go over here and you can export this data. You can email this data. So if you wanted to email this to a client or you can print it. Let's look at our hot sheet price change trends. So this is very interesting. We can see that we had a 30, we had a drop of 8%, 8.5% in April. So if you're working with a client and you wanna recommend that they do a price drop, you can come in here and see what's trending. So within Palm Valley, we're having an 8% price drop in April of this year. Last month we had, or in March, we had 7% drop. So this is kind of interesting. So year over year, it looks like there's been percentage drops in the Palm Valley Country Club. So this helps to support or to give you information when you want to do a price drop on a property. If I come up into my customize again, and I go back into my safe searches, I just wanted to show you that you can select different dates. And just remember it's a three year range. So I can select 2010, through 2013 and search the stats there. The key thing here, let's go back here. When you're going into menu, if you're taking notes, write this down. My market, when you're running this report, be sure you use a saved search that has no status selected. So go ahead. Save your search, put stats behind it, and be sure your status is deselected when running these reports. Otherwise, your information is not going to be correct. Okay, we're going to move on to our summary statistics. 
to pull up that report, if you just type inventory into this quick launch bar, you could see right here, menu items, your inventory and production report comes up. And this is going to be your summary statistics. Let's click on this report. Summary statistics, select residential. So this report is for the MLS. So let's go ahead and put in our quarterly date again. January 1st through March 31st. Okay, that's better. So up here, it tells you your parameters. We have residential, and here's your volume. And this is for the MLS. So we have our sold median price, list to selling price, our pendings, withdrawns, expireds. We have our median sold prices here. So, for statistics on the whole MLS, statistics reports, and for specific locations, use your other reports. The next report I'm going to cover is going to be your market share or your ranking report. So again, it's under inventory and production. So type INV here and open up that report. This is our saturation analysis report, and this is also known as the ranking report or your market share report. So I'm going to leave these all the property types selected. Leave everything else as is. And then I'm going to select market share. And within this MLX, MLS box, select the GPS MLS. That means that's our Greater Palm Springs MLS. I'm going to run a report for 2019. So I'm going to change my date to 2019. We'll start it at January 1st. And we'll run it through December of 2019. Select the date on your calendar. Okay, so we have January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019. We have our market share and our Greater Palm Springs MLS selected, and we have all our property types. And click on Next. Let's go in and rank our members. So we can select rank members, but notice you can rank offices, you can rank companies, you can rank companies and offices, or rank members within an office. I'm going to rank members right now, so click on use this selection. And I have two choices. I can run this report by number of transactions or dollar volume. I'm just gonna select dollar volume for this report. I'm going to select solds. But notice you can run actives, new, pendings. I have listing members selected. Or you can select listing and selling members, listing or selling members. You should use the listing or selling member because listing and means that you had to be on both sides of the transaction. So we're going with listing or selling member. This calculate numbers and volume using sides. So if there were two agents, on the buying side, it's going to split the number down the middle. If you deselect this, 
each member is going to get the full commission or the full volume price on that on this report. So I'm going to deselect that. And then you can select the number of members to display. I'm going to go up to 600 just because I've pulled the report and there was about 600 that came up. So I'm using 600. So if you look up here, you can see your parameters. You have all the property types in this search or in this ranking. We have January 1st, 2019 through December of 2019. So now we can see we're, we're not going to pay attention to these first two because they're non-subscribers and outside agents. So we have our ranking here. And let's see how many we have, how many results. So we do have 600 results here. So how would you find yourself? Do you have to scroll through and look at all these? Well, one of the tricks, you can use Control F if you're on a PC. So I'm going to click Control F. And notice up here, it comes, there's a find box. So I can type in a name. Let's type in Brad. So now when I type in Brad, all the Brad names are going to be highlighted. So this is going to help you to locate yourself within this list. You could um, put a thousand or 2000 results, whatever you want. So use control F to find your name and it'll be highlighted. So here's the volume. Here's our ranking report. We have Brady Sandal of Keller Williams. He's uh, first in line here with his volume. Okay, so let's go back, show you that again. Type INV into your quick launch bar. It pulls up your inventory and production report. Let's go to our saturation analysis. And we're going to run the report a little differently this time. We have our property types. We're going to select our market share. Select our MLS. We're going to run 2019. So for all you number crunchers, these reports are pretty informative and fun to use. You can print them, email them. export them. Okay, this time I'm going to leave the calculate numbers and volume using sides selected and let's see what the difference is. Okay, so that did change our results. We have a different person up in uh, first place over here. We have Glenn Cassell now of the Madison Club Properties. So use these reports, play around with them. You can um, run them different ways and um, just get, get it used to using them and um, they have great information. Use control F to find yourself. Okay, we're almost done here. If you have any questions, you could type them in now. I'm going to show you an, another good report, and this is a report that's going to run all your production. So you might have been in the business for 20 years or for five years. I'm going to show you how you can find all your transactions and print them in a report or save them as a safe search. This would be good to use 
if somebody comes up to you and says, well, why should I use you as an agent? And you can say, well, I've sold this many properties and you can show them a list. You can also print that list out. You know, if you're having a hard month or something, just look at it and see all the product production that you've done and just know that you're just going through a hard time at the moment. So let's go into, for the All My Production Report, let's go into Quick Search. And from this residential template here, go into the drop down menu and select Report Generation. Okay, so we're going to add a field here. We're going to look for our selling member. Type in selling member. Let's see, it's not coming up. There we go. Click listing and selling member. And that's gonna bring you up this box. So what I want you to do is select listing member, co-listing member, selling member, co-selling member. Select all of these and then type your name in here. And click on find. And your name's gonna come up. So click on your name. And that's going to run a report of all the listings or uh, sold properties that you've done within your career. So let's go over to save. We're gonna save this search, which contains all the properties you've ever sold in the MLS. Save it my production. And then click on save. So now if you ever need this report or if you ever need to show anyone, you can go under your safe searches. And there's your report, pull it up. And whether it's 500, 700, 1000, whatever it is, here's all the properties that you've ever sold. And you can go ahead over to the print button, deselect detail and select list. And let's preview that. So you can print out a list of all the properties you sold in your entire career. I'm just gonna show you real quick um, the reports one more time. So we have our market summary report. And that was using one location. So you can only use one location in this market summary report. You can pick any year you want. We have our My Market reports. And this is the report where you can go in and use a saved search. You can look at the hot sheet, price change trends, inventory, sold days on market, sold days on market versus sold price, volume and the average price. And then we had our summary statistics, inventory and production, summary statistics. This is taking a look at the whole MLS. We selected our MLS and then you put your dates in. Uh, this is good for quarterly reports. Then we have our market share reports, type in INV. And this is called the Saturation Analysis Report. We're going to do a market share report using the MLS. And we're going to find where you rank, or it's called a ranking report. And then last but not least, when we go into Quick Search, uh, notice that the template you last use sticks up here. So if you're going to use this report generation, 
just remember the next time you go in the MLS, bring it back up to residential when you're searching. Okay, and that report generation is how you're going to get your all the business you've done. You're just going to add in selling member, selling listing member, select these boxes, type your name in, find, select your name, and that's going to give you all your business. Save this search as my production, and then you can pull it up anytime you want it. If you have any questions or if you'd like um, certain topics covered in these webinars, please uh, send me an email. Um, it's training at cdaronline.org. And I really appreciate your taking your time to come out today.